Your makerspace could be your desk, a shed, or a garage. It's where you have the tools to get the ideas from your head into the world. But these tools take up space until there isn't any left. And so today we begin Makerspace Makeover. And I brought my brother Brad to help. I get it, there's definitely bigger problems to have than not enough space for all your machines. But it didn't start out like this. Six years ago, I had the two workbenches and a portable bench. And this was perfect for the level of tech customization that I wanted to do. But over time, you accumulate more tools and specific things for the odd jobs. Until eventually, you filled every corner of the space that you have. When I built my 3D printer enclosure, I explained in that video that it was to keep temperatures stable and reduce the sound of the 3D printer. But when I bought my AnchorMake M5, it was too wide to fit, so I had to remove the side and door panels from the enclosure. Back in 2020, when Norman was still a puppy, I was doing upgrades to my car and I had to use a camping lantern at my workbench because the light above me casted shadows of my head on what I was doing. And so I shared with you the process of making custom length LED strips, adding a switch and dimmer knob to the workbench for some really smooth and even lighting. This has been the best quality of life upgrade by far to my makerspace. But it's not the lighting that gets the most comments about the workbench, it's the screen in the middle of the pegboard, which as you can guess, I just literally cut a hole in the pegboard. And by chance, the cross bracing aligned with the vase amounts of the monitor and didn't block the ports. So once I mounted it to the workbench, I could use a right angle connector and squeeze it up against the wall. From where this once was, it's made a huge ergonomics difference. And I just used a Logitech media keyboard, which has a trackpad to send inputs to the Raspberry Pi running Linux. Now this has been used for 3D modeling as an Octoprint 3D printer server, which unlocks remote access, bed leveling mesh diagrams and time lapses where the print just grows out of the bed. But it's also been used to tell you about today's sponsor, PCBWay.com, where you can access CNC machining, 3D printing, and more without the need for the machines at home. Simply upload your file, select the material, color, and quality, and get an instant quote for it to be manufactured and shipped to you. Big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. On the topic of 3D printing, I don't recommend mounting the frame of an enclosure to your house, as newer high-speed printers shake a lot, and those vibrations transfer into your wall. Move, you're gonna get asthma. It's time to give this corner a new life. A friend of mine gave me a bunch of shelving with no wood. He worked at a warehouse that was flooded, and the metal was the only salvageable parts. And I've got an idea for it. See, this is my garage, after all, there's a lot of random spare materials that have been taking up space on my main good shelves. Since they haven't been used for years, but are useful to have in case, I'm gonna put them behind these usable shelves. And then I went to the hardware store to buy the cheapest, biggest sheet of wood. And yes, that says $91. But amongst the pile, I found this. The salesman said it's a cover sheet to protect the good wood on the pallet. It's the same dimensions, but a little thinner and he sold it to me for $2. Oh gosh, that's huge. Why did I do this from the start? Oh, this looks incredible. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I've taken the shelving that the laser cutter was on and moved the two workbenches to that wall. And I was able to then build a 1.2 meter by 2.4 meter bench top. Since there's shelving back here as a rear support, all that random stuff is viewable through the front shelf. And so if I put a 3D printer on the front shelf, you can just see all the mess. Now I don't like to waste material. I guess you just saw me stash a bunch of stuff behind some shelves. But I just love giving something a new purpose. There's no way, Norm. That was way too easy. All right, Mr. Robot Dog, you have to live somewhere else. 2D printer. What is it? The 2000s. Now, slot under. Let's freaking go. What have I got? Oh. 
I use this Primer Sealer and Undercoat to make all surfaces white. It also happens to have a matte finish, which is perfect for my needs with camera use. Oh my god, I did it again. That's my second one. What a huge difference. This is a drill for scale. <laughs> Massive. I'm so happy with how the workbenches are now, especially because it's below the data cabinet. So if I want to make any changes to my network or storage, the terminal's right here. And I can buy a longer HDMI cable and put the Raspberry Pi up in the cabinet and just feed it down to the screen. I do have a bucket with all the cans that were on the wall because I have to recreate the shelf with like smaller little pieces here and be mindful of when I open the data cabinet, it swings out that direction. But for the new side, I need your help. You don't have to come rescue me, I'm all right. I've got a bit of an idea for this space to use acoustic pin board. I've got some in the studio. I've got a couple of three walls in here, which would help reduce echo, but also the fans running in the machines. Also, don't worry, if you've seen the video when I made that, the PlayStation was broken before I pulled it apart. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. And then the only other upgrade, cut a massive hole in the roof. So I can run the fume extraction from the laser cutters uh, up through the ceiling. It doesn't matter if I've climbed in the roof and insulated the ceiling and insulated the garage door. Actually, that is an incredible difference. Buy the kit from Mitre 10, it was like 250 bucks. But all the insulation doesn't matter if I have to open a door to vent fumes outside. And then I probably also need some covers or like doors for the front of the 3D printers to keep dust out because they are on the ground. Oh, damn, dude. I've got, um, heck yes. How much better is that? Next to 3D printers, I reckon it'd be great to have some drawers or even like a tub organization system, part spins. If you've seen something really good, let me know. The cabinet here can go. I just built it from scrap spare wood that was laying around. I definitely still need some vertical sheet material storage, but could do with some pigeonholes or something up top for sticker vinyl. The pegboard is clearly not being used to its full potential. I've just got like half bike gear, some 3D print filament, big blank space. Thinking just making this whole wall black stuff. And then since there's no 3D printer here anymore, there's just a chest freezer, take the filament and put it over on this wall. And this came to me this morning. I could do like a swivel out type thing or even like a slide out, like a splice rack. But organization isn't the only change coming. Remember when I built my custom desk? For each panel that I finalized, I had to head in town to have the transparent acrylic cut. Well, my dream machine just arrived and I've been using it to prototype my next project, the custom PC build. And I cannot wait to tell you all about it next week. And I did that at home. I'm so stoked at these changes, but if you've got some ideas for better storage or even just stuff for a makerspace, let me know. I'm going Iron Man, Batman layer vibes, just like high tech type stuff. If you liked this video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.